Okay, so let's now first of all maximize the test uh, case and then let's add a new test over here. Okay, let me copy the header over here. Okay, and then I will simply paste. And it's going to be 0, 0, 02. Okay, it's a different one. Uh, we don't need an A and B. Okay, just that. And then it's going to be the test. And let me uh, hit more new lines over here so it's centered. Okay, let's now say we want to still create Allen mark. Uh, but you know we simply use the default constructor you know we don't need to initialize any weights or heights just for illustration purpose all right so let's now create Allen and mark so member Allen is assigned to new calling the default constructor new member and also member mark is assigned to new and also calling the same default constructor so now we got two separate objects Allen and mark let me introduce another uh, variable name, the third variable name. Let's say member uh, Tom is assigned to Alan. And then I would say Alan is assigned to Mark. And Mark is assigned to Tom. All right. And you, well, this might be uh, kind of familiar to you. You might have seen something like this in the context of uh, like a ver uh, primitive variable assignment. But I'm just trying to illustrate to you, this can also be applied in the context of OOP as well. Okay. But if you haven't seen this before, that's okay. Let's now try to understand this. I think the best way for me to really uh, go with this would be as follows. I would suggest you pause the video and then try to visualize exactly what happens after these one, two, three, four, five, these five lines, exactly how the arrows and the boxes will look like. I would re highly recommend you do this exercise and then we'll do this uh, together after you pause the video and then I'll write some assertions over here to conclude the exercise. All right, assuming that you have thought about it by pausing the video, let's now illustrate uh, quickly on the iPad. All right, so now uh, let's take a look what's happening over here. So that's the test, and I don't need to really draw the detailed structure for the objects because uh, here we're not really calling any mutated method or constructor to initialize the fill. We just want to see how the uh, copying of addresses might be visualized, right? So I just can just draw a box without the detailed fields over here. I don't need to. All right, and uh, let's see uh, for this particular one. Again, we got this line here to create Allen. And also we got this line here to create mark. Let's do that very quickly. Uh, let me also say this will be step number one. And this will be, uh, let me just say this, this will be step number two. For step number one, we are simply just creating Alan. It's simply pointing to some objects over here of type member. Well, I can just say a box. And then for step number two, uh, so this is one. Okay, I'll just say this is one. And also for step number two, we actually say mark is actually going to point to another separate object of the same type. And that one there is also of type member. So this is number two. All right, and then let's now go to number three. And for number three, let me use uh, orange over here for how about number three here for number three we are basically saying we're going to copy over the address of Alan into Tom right so that means Tom is actually going to point to wherever Alan is pointing to okay basically Tom is here and then since the address uh, this uh, the address of this object over here that stored in Alan is going to be copied over to Tom so that means Tom is now going to point to the same objects, right? So that means Tom is now going to point to the same object over here. So this will be number three. All right, so far so good. And let's see the next line. So this will be number four. What about number four? When we say Alan is assigned to Mark, right? So that means uh, we're going to copy over from Mark into Alan. So from Mark to Alan. So Mark uh, is storing the address for this and then copy that over to Alan over here. So that means Alan is now going to store the same, uh, the address of this object over here, particularly, right? So that means Alan, rather than pointing to this object over here, rather than pointing to here, is now going to point to this object over here. So this will be number four. 
number four. And then, what about number five? For number five, let me use purple over here. So for number five, we're going to make sure Mark is going to point to wherever Tom is pointing to, right? You can already see, uh, hopefully, the pattern more quickly. So now Mark, so number five will be Mark, rather than pointing to here, is going to point to wherever Tom is pointing to over here. So this will be number five, right? You can see after, so what's the overall picture over here? You can see the overall picture is as follows. Alan is pointing to the mark objects, which is pink, right? Remember the mark objects actually over here. And also, uh, mark is actually pointing to the Allen objects over here after the series of, uh, after all the five lines of code, right? You can see this part here is the blue object for the old Allen. So basically, these five lines of code is actually swapping uh, the addresses for Allen and Mark, right? So that's uh, something you can think, uh, something I can say now, you know, rather than giving you too many hints when you do the exercise. You can think about what we are really doing is swapping the addresses. Okay, let me recap very quickly. So we basically got Alan initially pointing to this object over here, and also we got Mark initially pointing to this object over here. After the assignments, Alan is pointing to this object here, and Mark is pointing to this object over here, right? Good, so that's the uh, swapping. And a very easy question for you, okay? Why could we not? Can we say alternatively, Can I simply say, Alan is assigned to Mark, followed by Mark is assigned to Alan. Will this actually swap? Okay, I'll leave that as a question for you. Okay, you can try to answer that. All right, so now how can we write the assertion to really make sure uh, it's really being uh, swapped? So now the problem is, uh, when we get to this point over here, so let me just tell you, uh, there's some, there, there will be some extra variables you have to introduce in order to write some meaningful ass uh, assertions. You can think about at this point over here, at this point, after executing one, two, three, four, five, right? At this point, Alan is already pointing to the old Mark, and Mark is already pointing to the old Alan. So now, how do we uh, somehow assert that they are really, uh, they really refer to the old, uh, the old, the other one, right? Alan is referring to the old Alan, and Alan is referring to the old Mark, right? And if can I simply say assert true? For example, I can say Alan is assigned to the old Mark, and also assert true, and the Mark is assigned to the old Alan. You can see it doesn't make sense, right? You can see Alan equals equals Mark is simply false because Alan is pointing to this object over here and Mark is pointing to this object over here. They're simply different objects. So what we really meant to say is, what Alan is really pointing to over here, this particular object is where Mark used to point to, right? So that's something we'd like to uh, introduce, okay? So without uh, saying too much, let me just uh, tell you exactly what you should write. What we can do is, we can introduce even more aliases for these two objects. Let's say I'm going to uh, create another alias over here before the swap. Let me call this maybe old Allen. And then I'm going to create another alias over here. It's going to be old Mark. So what's going to happen is um, we, just, uh, we just make sure when we actually do uh, these three lines over here, we simply don't really reassign the old Allen and old Mark. They were still pointing to, they were still pointing to old Mark and also old Allen objects over here. Right? So what we can say is the Allen right now is pointing to wherever the old Mark is pointing to. And also Mark over here is pointing to wherever the old Allen is pointing to. So that's basically what we wanted to do. Right? So that's the uh, idea conceptually. So this might be a little bit tricky here. Hopefully you don't really get lost, but that's really the best way to understand aliasing. All right? So what I will do now is I'm going to, having this idea in mind, I'm going to introduce uh, these two variables, O Allen and O Mark. Let me go there. So what I will do is, let's say before the swap, you can think about this will be the swap. And, but before the swap, let me introduce the old Allen and old Mark. Remember, old Allen is simply Allen. And remember, old Mark is simply assigned to Mark. 
what this will do is remember before the swap Allen is pointing to over here and oh Allen will just point to the same objects right and also before the swap mark is simply pointing to this object over here and old mark it was simply pointing to point to the same objects but when we execute uh these three lines we're not going to reassign old Allen or old mark they will st uh, stay there so that's why we can use it use them to do uh to write assertions later okay so now after the swap we can now say this assert true over here Allen is equal uh is uh, address will be equal to the old mark and also assert true mark equals equals old Allen so this will correspond to uh exactly what I visualize over here you can see Allen after the swap is pointing to the same objects that's being pointed to by old mark similarly uh mark is now pointing to the objects that's also being pointed to by old Allen right all right let's now try to run this uh test over here and it passes all right so these are the two examples i would like to introduce to you uh what i would like to show to you uh in order to really uh introduce to you the ideas about reference aliasing it's a very useful idea it's a little bit tricky but uh the best way to really trace is by drawing uh boxes and arrows especially how you can change the arrows uh around for example rather than pointing to here it's pointing to here right that's what i have been doing all right so understand what reference aliasing really is before we move on to uh the next topic